Welcome to Fitness Friday, combining drama, music, and healthy lifestyle. With today's host, Jason Sutter. Today's episode, Healthy Meal Planning. Hey everybody, how you doing? Uh, greetings from uh, sunny Los Angeles. Uh, good morning. Welcome to Fitness Friday with Drum Workshop. I'm Jason Sutter. Um, I've been on the road with Cher for the last three years, and before that, have has toured, have toured with Marilyn Manson and uh, uh, Chris Cornell and the New York Dolls and a bunch of cool bands. Um, uh, super cool to be able to get to be involved and hang out with you guys and talk about uh, trying to be healthy. Um, I'm no, I do cook. My mother is an amazing chef, and my sister is is an incredible vegan uh, chef. So I try. Uh, I I can't touch those guys, but I try. Um, super cool of DW to be throwing this uh, this event. I guess this is the tenth episode, so you can go here and see past episodes. I know uh, upcoming is Thomas Lang, and I think Dave Elich has already done one of these and a bunch of other cool cats. So check it out. Um, uh, love Drum Workshop. I use their hardware, their pedals, the 9,000 pedals. I've been with DW since um, 1995, my very first gig out of grad school, which is kind of insane when I think about it. That's that's just like nuts. That's the longest company I've ever had an association with. So um, thank you, DW, for making amazing gear and constantly pushing the envelope and making it much, much more uh, pleasant as a musician uh, and a drummer, especially. So um, thanks for having me and thank you guys for tuning in. Anyway, I'm going to start out. Basically what I'm doing and going to do here is kind of, I thought I would outline just three meals, like a breakfast, maybe a lunch, and then maybe a dinner idea. And the thing about at least these first two meals is as a touring musician, which is mostly what I try to do is be on the road and tour with different acts as a freelance drummer. Um, a lot of times it's, it's difficult to keep, uh, when you're grocery shopping and then you're leaving your home for a week, you're gone. These first two recipes are kind of hip. Um, they're not that crazy unusual and they're not involved if you're not a cook or anything. Uh, I know that because of this kind of lockdown thing for a lot of us, you've had to cook a lot more meals than you normally would say for a lot of friends of mine who maybe just eat out and maybe their, their, their stove or oven never really gets a workout. It's kind of been, um, brought into the picture more during this time. So these are a couple basic recipes. The, th the, the dinner is a little more involved, but basically the first is just a basic smoothie and some some options there that the, the lunch is kind of based on a, a vegan three bean salad that can be a meal or a side. And the, the, the dinner is a veggie lasagna. That's pretty amazing. You kind of can't lose if you follow the, the, uh, the recipe. And, and like I said, I'm not an amazing cook. You don't have to be incredible. You don't need a lot of materials, you know, to do this. And we'll go through all that as we go. Um, the main thing about these first two meals is that, you can uh, freeze or store, dry store these in cans. So uh, for me as a drummer, uh, with this first meal, uh, this, this uh, smoothie, this smoothie idea, and, you know, making a smoothie, you don't have to be a brain surgeon. But the cool thing about this is for years I would buy fresh fruit and I would buy it. And then, of course, I'd leave on the road and it would go bad and I have to throw it away. It's kind of a, a shame. I've kind of got better at it, but... Uh, for the most part, often I, when I leave on the road, I end up throwing a lot of groceries away because I'm gone for weeks at a time or months in, in many cases. So the beauty of this, this smoothie idea, the secret to this little recipe, uh, it's nothing fancy. Anybody can do it, um, but is that it's frozen. And that's really the key. Um, if you look at this image, basically this is some, we, uh, you, know, you can buy these packs. These are all organic and I'm buying these just at a Ralph's. You can get them at Trader Joe's and you can see this is like frozen blueberries, mixed berries. Um, I also have, here's pineapple and there's mango. And that's just an option. There's, there's tons of other things you can get. You can get all of these in one in a lot of cases. And you freeze them in the lap. They can last months and months. They reseal. 
Um, and so this really helps if you're in my situation, it saves on, you know, just just on, on so many levels. So um, what I'll do uh, basically for this to prepare it, really, you just need a blender. I just have an old school blender. I think I, someone gave me as a gift, but you could use a food processor like a Cuisinart. Um, uh, I'm sure there are lots of other options that you can get, like little small smoothie makers. Anyway, I just have a regular old vintage kind of blender and that's all I use. And so basically um, when you're making this, the, the basic uh, step is what I'll do, I'll maybe add, like if I'm home, I'll grab like fresh bananas. You can freeze bananas too. Uh, if you look at this, this graphic here for you, um, I'll get fresh bananas usually because that's easy and they don't, you know, if I'm home for a week, they won't, I don't have to worry about those going bad, but you can freeze bananas. Generally, what you try to do if you're freezing a banana is peel it first because it's really hard to peel a frozen banana. It's kind of messy and kind of a nightmare. So I would peel them first, maybe put them in a plastic bag. You can freeze bananas too and have those ready to go. But I usually go with a, a fresh banana, as you can see here. Um, and this is to taste. So, you know, I'm roughly saying a cup of, of frozen blueberries, maybe a cup of, of uh, frozen pineapple, another cup of, of mixed berries and you can do any variation or you could just do two cups of pineapple, two cups of, or whatever. Um, and usually I'll pour some juice in there. I usually use like a lemonade, like a fresh all natural organic lemonade or limeade. Um, but you can use orange juice or anything. And, um, I usually put some almond milk in for a little more texture. Um, usually a cup of that. And then sometimes I'll throw in ice, depending on how frozen the fruit is, you may not even need to do that, but I'll usually throw in some ice and, you know, I don't do the protein powder, but I know a lot of people do, especially on the road on tour buses. Um, and you can pour, uh, your protein powder in there as well. And this can all be done to taste. You can kind of experiment, but that's the basic, that's the gist of it. You throw it in a blender and you may have to stir it around or give it a second because it's frozen. So it can sometimes, you know, when you pour all the juice and the almond milk in, it can kind of turn into a, one big giant ice block. So give it a second or break it up and blend it. And it's, that's it. It's a piece of cake. Like I said, this isn't, uh, the, the secret to this is, is really that it's frozen. And to me, it just occurred to me, uh, you know, a few years ago, I was buying all this fruit and I try to be good about making a smoothie and having this like, you know, fruit in my life on the go in the morning, especially usually, uh, but you could have it any time of the day. And uh, the, the idea for the frozen, someone mentioned, yeah, you can just buy it frozen. And so that's kind of my tip to you. If you haven't, if that hasn't occurred to you, go through the frozen food aisle and, and try this out next time you're, uh, you're shopping. So that's a great way to start the day. It's super simple. I usually, um, I would usually, you know, drink a smoothie after I work out and, uh, it usually gets me less, you know, through till, till lunch, no problem. So that's that idea. Um, I know you guys can comment. I don't know if anybody at any time wants to comment or say, Hey, or talk about anything or ask any, any questions. Um, Dave Abrazee is pretty cool, uh, you know, and you can just reach out and say, yo, and, and if you have any questions about any of this or want to add to anything or feel free to just, you know, reach out, um, seeing you guys there. Thanks for, for tuning in. Super cool. that so many of you are on here from all over the world. Awesome. Um, it's one of the beautiful things in our profession is that we get to travel and go to all these great places. Last fall we were in, um, with Cher, we were in Europe for, seven, seven weeks. It was incredible. Almost two months. So, so cool to see all you guys from all over the country popping up here. Um, anyway, the next meal is super basic. Um, it's basically a three bean salad. My mom's made for years, super simple. It's vegan. It's just pure protein as a drummer. I remember once I was playing a tour with Chris Cornell and we were in, we we're playing the peace and love festival in Sweden. And I had met Mike, uh, we were opening, uh, we were co uh, I think we were direct support for the main stage. Um, it was the one of the, you know, like Saturday night and we were opening with Chris Cornell for, we were going on before Faith No More. 
which is pretty cool. It was like the reunion for Faith No More. Awesome band. If you don't know them, get hip to it. Check it out. It's really great. But Mike Borden, great drummer, Mike Borden. And uh, I had met Mike before. I had a great story with Mike very early in my career. He was a real sweetheart. But he had remember meeting me because this was, you know, 10 years before this day. And uh, we came in and Faith No More was hanging out. Chris was really nice to introduce us to everybody in Faith No More. We all ate together. It was really cool. They had a history, obviously. And... I remember I was sitting across from Mike Borden and I had been introduced as the drummer and we were chatting and he was eating and I was, I just had a salad and I was eating a salad. He's like, you know, he looked over at me and he said like, he's like, what are you eating? He's like, that's like rabbit food. He's like, you're a drummer, man. You're going to go out there and burn all those calories. He's like, get a bowl of pasta or something. You're making me nervous. Anyway, really sweet, funny guy. And anyway, this is a great, uh, he's like, you need protein. You're a drummer. You're about to go up there and burn calories. What are you doing? Um, so this is a great source of protein. It's all beans. It's super simple. It's like, just like rocket fuel for, for us as a drummer, really pure, nothing to it. And if you're, if you're vegetarian or vegan, this is right up your alley. Um, it can be served as a side for something, or you could put it on a, a bed of lettuce or greens or arugula and, and it's can be a total lunch, a total meal. And, and I actually... I eat that all the time. It's easy. The other thing that's great about it is it's mostly can come in cans. You just get three different kinds of cans of beans, and then you just need some, some other fresh ingredients we'll talk about in a second to prepare it. So you can buy these ahead of time and uh, eat a month, eat, you know, decide to eat this months later and, and have them in cans until you need it. So again, it's a great kind of thing for the drummers, like, you know, the touring musicians like us on the road who want to have, you know, be stocked when I come home, I have something I can eat. I don't have to run to the store, but I don't have to worry about it going bad. And that's a thing that I think a lot of musicians, it's discouraging for us because we're in and out. So um, the basic ingredients, this is again, super easy to prepare, takes nothing. You need a can opener, basically in a bowl to put it in. This is three options right here. Again, these are from just from a Ralph's and these are organic. Uh, beans. I always have our, our garbanzo bean in there because I just do. It's a texture. And then from there, you can add um, different beans here. You can see these are kidney beans, which are great. Um, and then I have pinto beans. You could also have uh, black beans, you know, which are great. Um, you can also have lima beans, which are a fantastic source of tons of vitamins. Usually I throw vi lima beans in, but, but for some reason, I uh, I, they're harder to find here, but basically, if you look here, the this is the the uh, in, the preparation, the ingredients: three cans of beans, generally, um, usually fifteen ounces each. Open those up, um, pour those in a like a cauldron, like a strainer for pasta. Rinse them thoroughly, rinse them, and then you just throw those back in. You can do it in either like a a, a mixing bowl. Uh, I add a little bit of salt, a little bit of pepper, kind of to taste. I may also throw in some like dill weed seasoning down there, you see, uh, and you can mess with garlic salt or garlic powder um, as far as seasoning. I don't get too involved. And then I usually I use uh, extra vir virgin olive oil. And that again is, you know, I would say maybe that's a quarter of a cup or a little less. You can go light. You don't want to go too much. You can kind of stir it up and test it. Um, some, you know, things like I watch my mother cook and she never uses any recipe. She never uses any, you know, she does it all by, uh, she's like a Jedi, you know, so she does it all by taste. So this is one of those recipes where I would recommend maybe, you know, put a little bit of olive oil on, not too much. You can always add more and you can't take it out. So be careful. So it's not too oily. Um, and then either red wine vinegar, apple cider vinegar, which is a great holistic, uh, alternative that a lot of people really love. It's very healthy too. Both give that same kind of taste. Uh, and again, same thing. You could probably, roughly, it's a quarter cup, but I would kind of go to taste, kind of equal parts uh, vinegar and olive oil. And um, and I chop up a medium onion, maybe small, depending on how you know much you want. But just know that when you, uh, I chop that up real fine. Know that when you add this all together, you kind of mix it up. I usually just kind of like, you know, as I, I, I look, you know, I kind of separate them and look at the bottom. And you want to see a little bit, of, of um, the oil and vinegar, like kind of, uh, you know, cons you know, consolidating at the bottom. You want to see a little bit of that. If you don't, then you probably don't have enough because as this sits, I generally put it in like a, uh, 
like a Tupperware container that you can seal up and I put it in my fridge. And another great thing, this is kind of what it looks like when it's, when it's done. Um, and this is great for the summer, you know, if you're having like people, you know, having like a cookout and, you know, it's a great salad to go with like a potato salad or something as a side. Um, so, you know, it's a colorful, really healthy, great, uh, alternative to, you know, potato chips or something that's less healthy or something that you would have with a cookout. Uh, it takes seconds to make. And again, for us as musicians, you can eat this later. You can store it, um, put it in the fridge. You may need to add a little bit of olive oil and a little bit of, uh, vinegar as you go, uh, when you eat it later because that will soak up and it will kind of uh need to maybe re replenish maybe not depending how much you use so um super simple uh you can store the cans for months at a time and 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 that's that's uh, a great way to conserve and then on top of it you can eat this for days afterwards it makes enough for probably probably 10 servings you know 10 different people uh but if it's just you you can store it, put it in the refrigerator and eat it as a side or eat it on its own uh, for days to come. And it stays good. And, and, and that's delicious. And like I said, you can put it on greens, serve it as a lunch, as a meal. Super simple, super healthy, uh, great fuel, great pro source of protein. And it's vegan and, uh, and, and, and vegetarian, depending on what you're into. Cool. Uh, anybody got any questions on that? Or if anybody has any comments, feel free to reach out. If you want to, you know, say anything or ask anything, uh, feel free, uh, to post anything. Um, that's, that's that. Um, and the, uh, third option, uh, the third kind of daily, you know, this is basically could be your meal for the day is a, a veg vegetarian lasagna. Uh, I'm not sure where I got this recipe from, but, uh, you know, it kind of comes from different places. Uh, I try to cook as much as possible. I have a really nice oven, a uh, really good stove I, I invested in years ago. I like cooking. Um, it's fun for me. It's kind of relaxing. It's mellow. Uh, there's nothing like, you know, making this meal is a great meal to making this for somebody, uh, having friends over. Uh, there's nothing like being able to prepare food like that for a bunch of friends. Uh, I do an annual... Christmas Eve hang with like cats like Elitch and Luke Adams and a bunch of other DW guys um, come every year. It's a drummer hang and for kind of whoever's left over in LA who hasn't gone home. Uh, and I cook a huge turkey and I cook like all the sides and I, there's nothing more satisfying than getting to make a, a big meal and being able to feed a bunch of people. So if you haven't done it, it's kind of a fun thing to do. And this lasagna is a great recipe to do that with. Um, obviously with social distancing, maybe that'll have to wait, but it generally is a cool and, 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 you know, lasagna, it's, it's not that involved I'll, as we go through this. It's not as crazy as it sounds like you think lasagna, oh my God, it's not that bad. So the supplies you're going to need here, um, I generally use a food processor, like a Cuisinart, you know, it makes it real easy to kind of really cut these down, um, really finely, which makes it cook better. And overall you get a better uh, a better end result, but you could use, there's a ton of different things you, you know, you could, or you could just, you know, hand chop it really finely. Um, and, uh, so basically I have a food processor, a cheese grater to grate the mozzarella cheese. Uh, you could get mozzarella probably pre-grated, but I like to get the real solid, you know, it comes in like, looks like a baseball, uh, real fresh mozzarella, uh, a mixing bowl, a large saucepan with a lid, you know, when I say that, like, it's like a pan with, that has like, uh, you know, a little bit of space in there. You want at least like two, two and a half inches so that you can really, you know, fill it up. Um, a pasta strainer and uh, a, 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 like basically a glass, like a Pyrex glass pan usually works, but you could use a metal pan as well for that's oven friendly and uh, tin foil, you know, baking foil. So uh basically i have some pictures here of this because it's a little involved um one of the first steps i i used um here's the ingredients here um basically i start out in, in that pan and i put maybe you know a certain amount of uh of um olive oil down and i will i learned this from some other chef i don't know how i just happened to be watching it online and it was kind of a cool idea 
you don't have to do this, but now I, I start with this where I take, I slice mushrooms, a whole kind of container of mushrooms. I slice white mushrooms and I basically put them on this light olive oil in the pan on a medium heat. And this is just a weird technique, but it's actually kind of cool. This is the only kind of involved part. Um, and you put them, lay them flat on there. And then I put foil on top of it over the olive oil. And then I put a pan on top of it, which is kind of putting pressure on the, the mushrooms. And the chef was kind of talking about this process. And basically it just kind of, uh, you just let it sit. You don't even really stir it. You just kind of let it sit for about five minutes. And what it, that does is it kind of reduces the mushrooms. They get a little smaller, but they almost caramelize because of this pressure and the steam and heat on top with the olive oil. It's kind of a cool process. It gives a texture almost like meat. And it gives, it brings a lot of really, really bold flavor from mushrooms that you wouldn't get if you just kind of threw them in with everything else or just kind of threw them in and sauteed them. So I basically, yeah, it's just this weird process where you kind of start there with the mushrooms. You don't have to do that, but I start there. And then basically I go through and uh, with the ingredients, I'll, I'll basically, I, I chop it on you. You can see real fine here. Those are the mushrooms after they've been you know, after about five minutes, I kind of stir those around. I add a little bit more olive oil, a little bit of salt and pepper. And that's something to think about um, with when you're cooking. And a great chef once told me this. Don't ever just put like a tablespoon of salt and, a, you know, a bunch of pepper in and that's it. The best thing you can do as you're cooking something like this, like lasagna, that's a little more involved. Add a tiny pinch as you go, a little bit with every ingredient. So you're constantly seasoning a little bit instead of one big amount. And that kind of really locks in the flavor. And it was kind of a crazy technique that I never thought about. It makes a huge difference. Okay. So that's a little secret I picked up online, like watching some chef cook just a little bit as you go. So you'll see, I kind of layer this because I need to like kind of reduce each one of these vegetables in this pan. I kind of let them saute, kind of reduce a little bit. So I have room and then I throw, I kind of add on top as we go. So if we could go back to the original, um, the the photograph the the first one you see this is the first process we have onions and mushrooms and then the next photo you'll see we go to i add brussels sprouts and all the all the you know there's a lot of ingredients here and you can add whatever you want but i found the more vegetables i add the better it is okay so i add brussels sprouts to that real finely um chopped and um, I describe how many in the, in, the, in the recipe so you can see there. You can follow that and pretty much be good to go. Cut those really fine. Add those. Again, let them saute. Let them put the lid on it. Let them kind of just reduce. And then from there, I add, um, I add carrots and green peppers. And uh, same thing. You just kind of let those saute. Let them sit, steam, put the, the lid back on. They, get, they reduce. Stir it up. And so it's a process. Season as you go. Again, like I was talking about, for each one of these, I'll season a little bit um, with salt and pepper generally. And you can use some garlic salt if you want. Um, I will add garlic to this too sometimes, like finely chopped clove of garlic, uh, probably early on, like right after the, right, right around when the onions and the mushrooms are, are in there in the very beginning, kind of get that garlic in there as well to keep it super Italian. So, um, and then from there we add, um, I add olives, finely chopped black olives, like a can of olives. And, um, and basically I just let that, that steam, I cover it up. I saw, I, you know, saw, I basically stir it continually, season it a little more. Again, I'll taste it as I go, just like, as you should taste it. So you're not over seasoning, but don't be afraid to, 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 you know, if you're doing this method I was talking about by adding slowly, you'll probably be safe and you can constantly test and find out if you've added enough salt and pepper and, and go from there. And then from here, the next process, um, you basically, you add, uh, this tomato, uh, sauce. Okay. Um, and so this tomato sauce, uh, is a special tomato sauce that I found from uh, a great friend of mine who's from Rome. She hit me to this. She's American. It's, it's, uh, basically this is the brand, um, Salmanzano. And this is, this is the stuff right here. It's the purple can. You can find this, um, with canned vegetables or fruit, but this is the magic right here. You could just, 
you don't need to go buy like ragu anymore for the rest of your life. I've just changed your life with this can. Okay. You can thank me when I see you on the road somewhere, but seriously, this is all you need. If you want to make a pasta sauce, this is it, man. This is some garlic, some, uh, chopped like, uh, uh, onions or, 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 you know, different like scallions or something and this sauteed and that's all you need. You never need to buy ragu again. This is the best in a can pasta sauce, even though it's just crushed tomatoes. It's how they do it. Um, it'll change your life really finely chopped. So I add, I open this up and I pour this in and then I kind of mix that in with the vegetables. Okay. And slowly let that start to simmer. I cover that and you want to see that kind of bubbling up a little bit. You want to just let it sit. Um, I also add um, uh, a little bit of, of pasta water, which is from my Roman friend here. She said her grandmother said that was her Italian secret of good luck. So while the pasta is boiling, you add like the, the kind of frothy water from the top. It's kind of, I don't know if it really makes a difference. It's like a magical, you know, grandmother Italian, you know, secret. Uh, some juju magical thing. So uh, I do that, you know, about four tablespoons. Um, because this is another little secret. Um, I always buy oven ready uh, lasagna pasta. Okay. And that means you don't need to boil it. You can just put it on and we're going to talk about as we build. But the secret, another chef hit me to is you actually boil that oven ready uh, as, and that's a secret I learned because you just get it where it's really al dente, just where it starts to bend, and then you take it off, you strain it. And the reason you do that is, one, it saves time for cooking, but two, in the past, before I had learned this little secret, I always used the, you know, raw um, oven-ready uh, pasta for the lasagna pasta, and to me, it always was a little dry, which makes sense. The moisture from the vegetables and the, the sauce are what's make, what makes the pasta you know, uh, you know, uh, soft. And so you'll lose a bit of that moisture. I found the secret is amazing. It gives you just a great texture. It's not too runny, but it's all, it stays moist for days and it's incredible. And that's from actually boiling just a little bit to get this pasta al dente. So that's another little secret for this lasagna. It's oven ready pasta, but you actually cook it a little bit before you put it up. Uh, so back to that that sauce image, you can see also here, I actually add another secret. That's my, my little secret is I add a heavy cream to it, like heavy cream, like whipping cream or heavy cream. And that's pretty, that can blow your diet a little bit if you're worried about calories, that, can, that definitely starts to add to it. But otherwise, up to now, pretty much we're dealing with all vegan. This is totally a vegan meal. Um, that cream, you could leave it out. It's my little secret. It basically gives you like a rosé sauce. Okay. So, and you know, you can, that's another one where you want to start small, maybe a, a half a cup or a quarter cup, and then kind of add from there as you go, stir it thoroughly. And then you can see the texture. I like a nice orange uh, cream sauce, you know, like it's called almost like a, like a vodka sauce. They call it, you know, it's like a, like a orange cream. I like a nice, to me that keeps it hearty. Um, when you cook it with the lasagna and I make that as a pasta sauce all the time too. It's kind of the best of both worlds. It's very hearty, um, with that cream, but, uh, it does add calories and it does blow the vegan deal. So totally optional, but for me, it's the magic in the sauce and everybody seems to love that. And it's a little more unusual than like just a red sauce. Um, from there, stir that up. And then we go to the process of actually, um, making the lasagna and basically you want to have, uh, the mozzarella. I, like I said, I get like a, a ball. I, I grate it, uh, the whole thing. And then I have really nice, fresh, um, uh, ricotta cheese as well. And basically what, what I do is you start on the pan. You don't even have to grease it. You start with a little bit of this pasta sauce like this. I just kind of lightly coat the whole bottom of the pan with the the pasta sauce, and then I uh, I put strips of um, of the lasagna noodles to start the layer. I repeat it with the pasta sauce, the same thing, not too much, but you know enough. Don't be afraid. Like I put a little bit of a layer. Make sure the pasta you know noodles are basically touching each other, right from edge to edge. It's usually about three for me. Cover it, and then I I pretty thoroughly sprinkle uh, mozzarella all over it, like you can see. 
I use fresh basil. That's fresh basil from my garden. Um, I'm pretty stoked in California. We got a pretty, pretty good season here. So I've got loads of basil. So that's just sweet basil. Um, and I'll put that in and then you can see that's just basically spoonfuls of ricotta cheese kind of evenly across and, and that's it. And then you repeat the process. You put another layer of noodles on, you do the same thing and you just repeat this process. I generally, I think I do the first layer of pasta noodles, second layer and third. And on top of that third, but depends, you might be able to do a fourth and that's fine. On top of that third, I do the same thing, the same process, and I'll probably add a little bit more mozzarella just so it has a little more of a, of a crust of cheese. And basically when you bake it, you want to have the oven pre preheated and all the, uh, the, the cooking instructions are in there. So if I, I've, I've, I've been a little vague on that, it's all in there uh, in the recipe when you, if you want to consult this. So um, you have a preheated oven, you put it in. I always keep it covered first with foil for about 40 to 50 minutes. And another technique, a technique with this is using a toothpick to kind of stick it in. And you can, if you pull it out and it's not too gooey or too wet, then you know that things are starting to cook inside. That's a good little technique, the toothpick. And um, after about 30 or 40 minutes, you can see the top should look like it's starting to look a little cooked, but it's still pretty, you know, the cheese is melted, but it's not browning. You take the tin foil off for another 15, 20 to 30 minutes, and you want to just keep kind of checking every 10 minutes and watch and let that texture of the top, it'll start to bubble. And then as you start to get a nice brown kind of across the top, um, you know that you're ready to take it out. And honestly, I take it out, you can let it sit for 10 to, minutes to half hour, or you could, you could, if you do it right and you follow the instructions right, here's the finished product. It looks great. You want a little crispy around the edges, but that's all to taste. That's how I like it. I sprinkle salt and pepper on top again, just for a little texture. And um, basically you can cook it. You can cut into it and eat it right away. You're ready to go. That's literally probably 10 minutes after. And that's a good texture. You can see um, it's got a cream sauce, but you want it to kind of not be too runny, but don't worry about it if it is. It's delish. You know, people are blown away. It's like you're a magician. You made lasagna. Like it's like the most crazy thing in the world. And even, you know, for me, it was up until recently until I started cooking it. And it was like, oh, yeah, it's a piece of cake. It doesn't take much. You just need a few basic cooking utensils and, and these ingredients. There are a lot of vegetables and you can change it up. You can add stuff. I used to use like like half an onion. And, and the, I found out if I use the whole onion, the more vegetables you put in that actually better it is. It really is. It's, it's delicious and it stays moist and, uh, it, you, you'd be hard pressed to mess, to miss meat in this at all. It's, it's, if you do it right. And like I said, with the, with the, uh, mushrooms, the way you, you caramelize those in the beginning, you don't even miss, you don't even, you'll think you're eating like, you know, beef or, you know, ground beef or something or some sort of sausage in there. And it's all veg. And if you don't add the cream, I mean, the cheese obviously blows the deal for a vegan, but you could get probably get vegan cheese. Um, but uh, that's a killer meal. And there you have basically you have a smoothie to start the day. You have a great healthy lunch that's protein or side, depending on what you want with the be three bean salad. And then you have this for dinner. You could even have the three bean salad as a side with this lasagna. It could be totally Italian, but, um, uh, you know, that that could that could totally work um and uh, or or a, yep the gentleman just said a garden salad i actually find with this that lasagna and i always have salad with everything as we're talking about being healthy on the road i um you could have a great a garden salad with this with this meal generally though because there's so much vegetables in it it's so hearty i don't even do that i really just have the lasagna by itself with some, maybe a glass of wine or something, and you're good to go. But you could definitely have a green salad with olive oil and vinegar and, and just, you know, keep it super Italiano and be rocking, you know, like an in salata mista. And, um, uh, you know, Michael here is asking me a question about when do I eat at when I'm, as opposed to when I'm, you know, in relation to when I'm about to work. And that's a great question. Um, for me, I try to eat, I always have to eat before I play kind of back to that Mike Borden, you need your, you know, your energy and your rocket fuel and your protein. So I'm unlike say guitarists or singers. A lot of times I find they don't eat 
until after the show or they eat like hours before. I try to time it where I eat about an hour to an hour and a half before I get on stage. And I and that way I have just enough energy. I've kind of di started digesting the food. So now I have, I have energy and I'm ready to go. I also eat usually after a show as well. I'll want to eat something, whether it, you know, depending on the situation, you know, something small, but something generally healthy and with more protein after I play a show. Um, certain shows are more strenuous than others. And so you'll want to eat more. The share show is about an hour and it's, it's more mental strenuous uh, than it is physical, but because I am playing on this big giant drum set, there is a physicality to that, believe it or not. I found I was really using these upper muscles when I'm playing this giant octoplus kind of vintage kit for that vibe. Um, so it is a workout, but, but luckily it's kind of pits, spaced out with monologues and dance numbers and things. So it's not as gnarly, but when I was playing with Chris Cornell, you know, Chris loved drum solos, you know, it was, uh, so I would do three full drum solos a night uh, and we do a three hour show. So, I mean, I was younger, that was 10 years ago. I mean, I was burning. I can't even think, imagine I watch the videos and I get like tired just watching old footage. So that would be required. Definitely eating a lot of protein before the show. But generally, to answer your question, I eat about an hour, about an hour before I get on stage, and it, I never have a problem. Um, uh, so that's something to think about as musicians, you know, to time out when you're gonna when you're gonna eat. Um, and different gigs may require different, you know, um, meals. In Europe, if I'm in Europe, I'll try to sleep, you know, for a half hour on a tour bus after I eat. Uh, giving me a half hour to prep before the show too, which is also healthy and something to think about when we're talking about fitness, you know. Um, in addition to that, for me, I'm not like a crazy gym dude, but I do go to the gym every pretty much five days a week. But I basically just run. I go, I get on a treadmill and I do the routine where I'll say walk for three minutes, like at a fast pace, and then I'll run for seven, you know. And then I'll up the, I'll come back down, walk for three more minutes, and then I'll run for seven minutes, but I'll run at a faster rate and I'll push myself. And then I'll walk for another three minutes, kind of maybe a little more brisk, and then I'll crank it up. And that last seven minutes, I'm gonna, I'm gonna run like, you know, much faster kind of, and that's usually a 30 minute workout. And then I walk for another three minutes and each minute I kind of, dig, you know, walk it down slower to where it's like I'm barely, barely, you know, just super slow walking. So I'm kind of down pacing and that's, that's my basic workout. I try to be very, un, you know, uh, uninvasive and, and, you know, protect my joints and muscles. I don't run outside. I know a lot of guys who do, but I also know a lot of guys who run outside, uh, gives them a chance to see the area they're in, depending on where they're on tour. But it also can with the, uh, you have to be careful because, uh, you can, you know, with the uneven terrain or different, you know, circumstances of running outside an area you may or may not know, you could you could hurt yourself. And I know a lot of drummers who have, or it could be real hard on your knees. So I tend to stick to a treadmill and keep it super simple. Uh, but, you know, always be careful. You don't want to do something stupid um, and hurt yourself and, and take yourself out of the tour or out of the game. Another thing, you know, that uh, you have to be careful about on the road for me is, I found, um, you know, I go and I, 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 I check into the hotel and I'm gone. And whether I'm in, if I'm in, you know, Austria or I'm in Boston, anywhere I go, I am out of the hotel. I'm always walking, adventuring. I'll go, I'll walk six miles. And now with my phone or with a Fitbit, you can see what you're doing. I just go. I like to be out. I like to experience the city. I like to eat. And, and so that's another exercise for me. In America, it's not as bad. In Europe, man, you can fall down the rabbit hole. There's so many great places, a place like, like Brussels in Belgium. You could, you could find yourself walking, you know, miles. And I, and, and I do. And luckily, uh, Ashley Reeve, great bass player, she and I are partners in crime. So we're like, we wake up in the morning on a day off. We're like, all right, meet at breakfast. And we're off. We don't come back to like five or six. We walk six, seven miles, see everything, go to every, you know, cool cathedral, every, t you know, you name it, we're there. If it's a, you know, a, a monument or a cool shopping area or a cool, you know, location or locale or restaurant, we do the research and we go, we get the most of it. It's like vacation while on tour. And I highly recommend that to all of you. And 
obviously this crazy situation we're in with this, you know, lockdown. I'm so glad I never spent any time in my hotel room because now I'm spending time in my my home in LA, which is great. I can't complain, you know, but, but uh, it's what we need to do. But that said, I we went for it, man, on the road. That said, I did find that I would be exhausted on the show day. With Cher, usually it's a day off. Uh, you get to the city in the morning, you have a day off, and then the next day you have the afternoon till about three, then you leave the hotel, go to the show, and drive to the next city. So we're lucky that no matter where we are, uh, anywhere in the country or anywhere uh, in, you know, out of the country, we're in Australia, New Zealand. It's been an amazing three years with, with her. We go everywhere. So one thing I found, especially overseas when you're dealing with a certain amount of jet lag, which if you haven't experienced that, it can be pretty brutal, you know, um, and it can last a month. Um, and it doesn't really seem to affect my playing because luckily usually around six or, seven or eight when you're supposed to play, the jet lag kind of, gets you back in the U.S. kind of schedule. So usually it's good to play, and by the end, you're exhilarated, your blood's flowing. But before it, you got to be careful. So one thing I found is I had to kind of choose between do I go to the treadmill and do my half hour, or do I nix the treadmill and I'm already walking like crazy? And I opted for the walking and the adventures. So I, in Europe, in these last runs in Australia, I would have to be keep it in check. I couldn't do my treadmill every morning or else I'd be exhausted after I walked that much. So I had to kind of pick and choose. You got to be careful and know your limits. You know, I'm not kidding, or so I can only do so much. And also just be careful. You know, I try to be active, but a little story, a little, you know, I joke when I'm in clinics that I love my life and I'm luckily been very healthy and, and I'm at a point in my career where I'm exactly where I want to be. And I get to play with these great bands and great people and great musicians and great tour managers. It's just, you know, I'm really satisfied with this point in my career. And so my joke is I don't try anything new at this point. Okay. And I know that's ridiculous sounding, but what I mean by that is just be careful. If you've got a good place, I once came off the road with foreigner, Actually, with Chris Cornell, I came off the road and I decided I was going to play tennis because I had like four months off and everybody was playing tennis. Wimbledon had just happened and we were watching it on TV on the run. I thought, I'll take tennis lessons. I'll play tennis. This will be great. So I was home in, after this tour and I got really into it, bought this dope racket, went up to Griffith Park with uh, my buddy Brett Simons who plays in Chicago. And we played tennis like, you know, two hours a day for five days a week. And I got had lessons and... And then one day my arm just started feeling like really weird, like three months later. It was like, wow, my arm feels weird. What is that? It's like a tingling I've never felt. And basically that was the beginning of what became like a year of like the worst tendonitis of my life. Worst tennis elbow, golfer elbow. It spread to my left arm and I just got the foreigner gig and it was misery. So uh, my, that's my joke is I'm never trying anything new again. I'm not jumping out of a plane. I'm not doing, I'm not getting on a motorcycle. I'm not doing anything I've not done because I love my life and I'm not going to mess with it. So I know that sounds ridiculous because everybody's like, you should try new things and do, but anyway, the joke is I tried tennis and it didn't work. So be careful. Uh, you know, I was able to play the foreigner shows, but the first year with them was miserable. I wore like these arm braces and luckily with foreigners, since they were all, older cats you know it's the youngest guy in the band they all had had like ailments so to them it wasn't like a big deal they were like oh yeah we got i got a bad knee and i got a bad back and so it was fine but to me it was like man i could i could not play at my potential i was in pain like you know i learned a lot met with a lot of sports doctors and so my point is is be careful if you're trying something new or being active don't Whatever you do, don't do something that could potentially get in the way of your your gig or your dreams. You work so hard to get to this point as a player. You know, be careful physically because our gig is very physical, and you think you're invincible, you know, but you know, so you have to be careful. So there's that. I don't know if anybody has any comments or questions. Feel free to throw stuff up because we're kind of running out of time here. Uh, one last thing, a lot of people ask me. Um, you know, basically, uh, yeah, Ashley in the house, she's reaching out saying we get to go do cool things. And we do. And I'm lucky to have Ashley, the you know amazing bass player. If you guys are drummers, uh, don't know Ashley Reeves. She just reached out. She's an incredible musician. But but also she's a partner in crime. 
for me, like I've always been the guy on every tour where I come back to the bus and everybody's sitting on the bus and they're like, oh, you have ready to leave. And they're like, you know, what did you do? And it got to the point where I couldn't tell the guys in the band that I just went to like the Sistine Chapel. And when, then I went to this Italian place and then I went to the, you know, Coliseum in Rome. And then I, I can't, you know, I do all that stuff in a day. I could never tell them that because then they, they'd look at me and be like, you know, they'd be resenting me for doing all this cool shit while they sat in their hotel room. Mind blowing to me. Luckily with Ashley, uh, she's like, let's go dude. And I'll be like, man, I'm getting tired. She's like, why don't we do like another, what's, what's down there? And so I've like, I've met my match. So anyway, Ashley rules. If you're looking for a bass player, look no further. She's like as good as it gets. So, uh, for all you drummers out there, anyway, she rules. Uh, and it's good to have a partner to go out on the road with and, and really do these adventures, but we definitely keep ourselves in check and, and you can too. You know, you want to eat the food that's there. And a lot of times in Europe, it can be really rich. But if you're as active as, as we are, you're walking all the time, you're burning these calories, you're allowed to have, you know, to have that fun. Um, to kind of wrap all of this up, you know, basically the last of it is, you know, a lot of people were asking, you know, what do you do to stay active during this kind of lockdown and during this kind of unique, crazy pandemic? And for me, I obviously not going to the gym. I don't feel comfortable. I tried to go out and hike, you know, one of the canyons here, a lot of people hike, but it was like tons of people not wearing masks, even though you're required to. So I was like, man, I'm not cool with that. Um, so I've actually been swimming laps. I am lucky enough to have a swimming pool in my backyard. Um, I live in the Valley, you know, classic, you know, North Hollywood and I have a pool. So I, it's not, you know, I have to swim, I think eight, eight, times back and forth to do one lap, I think. So I, every other day, I gotta be careful, just like tennis, you gotta be careful, even though it's very, you know, it's uninvasive, it's nothing like, you know, it's it's very mellow on your bones and joints. But I swim and it's, it's great for cardio. My lungs are just like nuts when I get out of there. My heart is pounding, um, you know, I'm working my legs, my muscles, all your joints, but it's it's cushioned. So I'm trying to do that every other day for a half hour it's a workout. It's great cardio. It's brutal. And then, and then every other day I'm just doing like basic, like push-ups, like a jailhouse workout. You know, I'm doing like 40 push-ups a day and I'll, I'll pick that up as I go. So every other day, basically swimming and then basically just like upper body kind of push-ups just to kind of just get your, your heart rate going in the morning and, and a little bit of muscle mass. Um, another thing I try to do if I'm talking on the phone, just talking to somebody just, you know, to stay sane I'll try to do just walk around my pool. I'll just do laps. Like while I'm on the phone, my, my earphone, earphones in, I try to be conscious and I just, I do laps around my pool. It's safe. It's exercise. You don't even think about you're doing it. And I'm talking on the phone, which is what I would be doing on the road. I'd go out. And if I was going to have a big convo with somebody, I'd take a walk and get exercise and see my surroundings. So those are my kind of like COVID kind of hometown exercises that I'm doing. I'm lucky to have a pool and it didn't even occur to me that I could, I should just tap into that. So, you know, use what you got, you know, be resourceful to try to stay active. Um, other than that, you know, I think that kind of sums it up. I don't know if anybody has any, uh, questions on anything. You know, I try to stay sane. I go to my, my practice, my practice, uh, studio, uh, Renee is asking if I have a website. I do. It's, it's jasonsutter.com. Um, and we're going to post all that at the end here. You can see all that. If you want, you can reach out. I'm teaching Skype lessons. If you want, I got a bunch of students all over the world. Um, you can reach out to me and we could do that. Um, and you can see my Instagram, everything's up here, but my website, you can reach out and contact me. It'll say contact and it'll send me an email to a separate email account. If you want to, if you have any questions about any of this cooking or life, or you want to, you know, do a career, you know, counseling lesson about where to go or what to do after all this stuff or talk about, uh, you know, do a drum lesson. I'm, I'd love that. Um, trying to stay active, but I'll go and I'll practice, you know, a few times a week, run through the share show just to keep that going because it's uh, pretty involved. But um, I do have a recording session coming up this next Thursday with a couple stone temple pilots dudes, which is really cool. Um, excited for that to get to play with a couple of those guys. I don't know what the project is, but they're producing it. So fun to kind of play, um, trying to be super safe. And I'm sure I'll wear a mask during that. And, you know, uh, but that pretty much sums it up. Um, 
I want to thank all you guys for coming and checking this out. Super cool. I try to be health conscious as much as I can. You know, I try to eat and enjoy uh, food, but I also try to be careful to make sure that I'm always active and maintaining it because this is a physical instrument and it is a physical job and you do have to maintain yourself. And it's incredible to look at people like Kenny Aronoff and cats like that have been doing this a long time, maybe 10 or 15 years longer than I have. And they still look great. They're still super active. And, and they're, and it's because they're, they're moving and they're going to the gym and they're, they're keeping all these things, these, these, you know, your diet and perspective. So I try to actually care about that. I'm not crazy about it. Um, like someone like Dave Elich, I know who's a homie is way more active and way more, um, in the gym, like centric. I'm not like that, but I do make sure that I'm constantly keeping my cardio, um, and my calories in check. And, um, I'd love to thank DW for this, for asking me to do this and for being amazing. And like I said, for 25 years, it's crazy. They're the longest endorsement I've had. That's amazing. Making pedals and hardware and just, you know, incredible drums and just like what an incredible company. So really an honor to get them to be part of the DW family for that many years. I mean, that's a long time. They were there right when I got out of graduate school, got my first job in 95 with Julian at Hatfield in the middle of the grunge era. Kind of an exciting, cool time. And DW was kind of on their trajectory and they're, you know, huge now. And, and I'd love to thank Jules, you know, for having me. She's incredible and always, you know, put, helping me put this together. Um, she's super great. So thank you, Jules for everything you do um you know you guys don't see this a lot of times but when i'm doing clinics you know i've done numerous clinic tours for dw over the years in europe and crazy places and you know no matter where i am i could be in london or you know crazy different you know cities and jules is always just kind of pops up out of nowhere and is like helping adjust my stands when i'm getting ready to do this clinic it's like she's like this little magical uh you know drum fairy that we have uh so thank you jules for everything you know definitely do not take your efforts for granted and and for everything you're doing here with this fitness friday um this is coming up i think thomas lang is next um episode thomas rules he lives about 20 minutes from me here and um uh i'm sure you know looking at thomas lang who looks like the like he was built in a test tube he's like the perfect human he should he probably has a lot to offer as far as um fitness and and health uh great dude great drummer thomas lang is next on this and you can go i think to to this uh www.dwdrums.com slash drum network to see all these episodes there's already been i think 10 of them um and uh and mine will be up there too if you want to check it out down the road um i think that's it i think we're almost out of time um Thank you guys for tuning in and checking this out. Super cool to get to do this uh, from my house in North Hollywood, California, lovely LA. Um, great to be here. Stay safe, uh, wear a mask, um, vote in a hundred days or less, super important. Um, everybody, your vote counts if you're wherever you are. And thanks again to DW and to all you guys for having me and for tuning in. Stay healthy, stay safe. And keep rocking. Drums rule. Cheers. Peace out.